Welcome to CETA Labs. First let's find out the answers to the questions asked in the last tutorial. Our first question was to write a Verilog code for 4-bit parity generator using data flow modeling. And here is design block for the same and stimulus block also. Second one is to design 1-bit full subtractor. Here is both design and stimulus block codes. Third question is to write a Verilog code for 8-bit magnitude comparator. Here is the code. And last one is to design 2 is to 1 multiplexer using conditional operator. So, both design code and test bench code are here. Is it clear? Now we are all set to move on next level of modeling. In this tutorial, we will learn next level of abstraction that is behavioral modeling. This tutorial is divided into two parts, Part A and Part B. This tutorial is comprised of Part A, consisting of structured procedures, procedural assignments, timing control statements, block statements and the rest we will study in Part B of this tutorial. With the increasing complexity of digital design, it has become vitally important to make wise decisions early in the project. Designers need to be able to evaluate the trade-offs of various architectures and algorithms before they decide on the optimum architecture and algorithm to implement in hardware. Thus, architectural evaluation takes place at an algorithmic level where the designers do not necessarily think in terms of logic gates or data flow, but in terms of the algorithm or desired functionality they wish to implement in hardware. They are more concerned about the behavior of the algorithm and its performance. In this description, we do not need to know the logic diagram of the system. What must be known is how the output behaves in different condition. Only after the high-level architecture and algorithm are finalized, designers start focusing on building the digital circuit to implement the algorithm. Verilog provides designers the ability to describe design functionality in an algorithmic manner. In other words, the designer describes the behavior of the circuit. Thus, behavioral modeling represents the circuit at a very high level of abstraction. Verilog is rich in behavioral constructs that provide the designer with a great amount of flexibility. There are two structured procedure statements in Verilog, always and initial. These statements are the two most basic statements in behavioral modeling. All behavioral statements can appear only inside these structured procedure statements. Verilog is a concurrent programming language, unlike C programming language, which is sequential in nature. Activity flows in Verilog run in parallel rather than in sequence. Each always an initial statement represents a separate activity flow in Verilog. Each activity flow starts at simulation time zero. Keyword for both always and initial structured procedure are initial and always in lowercase. The statements always and initial cannot be nested. All statements inside an initial statement constitute an initial block. An initial block starts at time zero, execute exactly once during a simulation, and then does not execute again. If there are multiple initial blocks, each block starts to execute concurrently at time zero. Each block finishes execution independently of other blocks. Multiple behavioral statements must be grouped, typically using the keywords begin and end. If there is only one behavioral statement, grouping is not necessary. This is similar to the curly brackets grouping in the C programming language. Typically initial blocks are used for initialization, monitoring, waveforms and other processes that must be executed only once during the entire simulation run. In this example, the two initial statements start to execute in parallel at time zero. If a delay hash delay is seen before a statement, the statement is executed that delay time units after the current simulation time. Is it clear? C, as we discussed, initial block will start execution at time zero. First statement x, y, z will be executed at zero time unit as there is no delay. Next statement, a, 
BC will be executed after a delay of five time units, as delay of five time unit is provided before this statement. So, simulator will reach second statement MNO at 5, that is, after finishing execution of the previous statement. MNO will complete its execution at 15 unit time, because there is 10 time unit delay and its encounter time is 5 time unit. So, 10 plus 5 is 15 time unit. Similarly, PQR is encountered at 15 time unit and delay of 5 time is provided. Therefore, it will complete its execution at 20 time unit. Next is, always, structure procedure statement. All behavioral statements inside an always statement constitute an always block. The always statement starts at time zero and executes the statements in the always block continuously in a looping fashion. This statement is used to model a block of activity that is repeated continuously in a digital circuit. See programmers might draw an analogy between the always block and an indefinite loop. But hardware designers tend to view it as a continuously repeated activity in a digital circuit starting from power on. To control the looping of always block, we provide some condition with always, and this condition is known as sensitivity list. Its syntax is shown here. Always is followed by symbol, at, and then the sensitivity list is provided. Sensitivity list contains all the input ports, and always block will only be executed when there is any event on any of the input port, or we can say there is any event on sensitivity list. Here are two Verilog codes written in behavioral modeling, but the difference is use of sensitivity list. In example 1 Y will be executed again and again. While in example 2, Y will change only when there is any change in value of either A or B. So, it will be executed only once, in contrast to example 1, which was executed again and again in looping fashion. Also, Y will store the value till next event on input variables. The fundamental difference between the two statements is explained here. Initial will be executed only once. While always executes again and again. Sensitivity list is not used in initial block whereas it is used with always block. We don't prefer initial in main module. Whereas always can be used in main module as well as test bench. Initial is not synthesizable. On the other hand, always is synthesizable. I hope concept of initial and always must be clear to you now. Procedural assignments update values of reg, integer, real, or time variables. It is used to assign to only a register data type. The value placed on a variable will remain unchanged until another procedural assignment updates the variables with a different value. These are unlike continuous assignments discussed in data flow modeling. Assign keyword is not used in this modeling. It is of two types. As we will move further, we will discuss them in detail. Here is the syntax for the procedural assignment statement. The left hand side of a procedural assignment must be of reg, data type and can be one of the following, register, real, time register variable, memory element, bit selective register, part selective register, real or time data type and concatenation of any of the above. One can visualize a port as consisting of two units, one unit that is internal to the module, and another that is external to the module. The internal and external units are connected. There are rules governing port connections when modules are instantiated within other modules. The Verilog simulator complains if any port connection rules are violated. Internally, input ports must always be of the type NET. Externally, the inputs can be connected to a variable which is of type REG. On the other hand, internally, output ports can be of the type REG or NET. Externally, outputs must always be connected to a NET. They cannot be connected to a REG. Here, Internal block represents main module or design block where we write our desired logic. And, external block represents test bench environment. Various behavioral timing control constructs are available in Verilog. In Verilog, if there are no timing control statements, 
the simulation time does not advance. Timing controls provide a way to specify the simulation time at which procedural statements will execute. There are two methods of timing control, delay-based timing control and event-based timing control, and further event-based timing control is also of two types, edge-sensitive timing control and level-sensitive timing control. Delay-based timing control in an expression specifies the time duration between when the statement is encountered and when it is executed. We use delay-based timing control statements when writing a few modules in the preceding tutorials but we did not explain them in detail. Syntax for the delay-based timing control statement is shown here. Delays are specified by the symbol hash and it denotes wait for. Here are the examples showing delay-based timing control. In first one, semicolon representing next line, that means next line will be executed after 10 time unit delay. Next example, A, will be assigned value 5, after a delay of 10 time units. An event is the change in the value, on a register or net. Events can be utilized to trigger execution of a statement, or a block of statements, on changes on a signal value or transition of the clock. The symbol, at, is used to specify an event control. Here is the syntax. In an event-based timing control, statements can be executed on changes in signal value, or at a positive or negative transition, of the signal value. The keyword pos edge is used for a positive transition and neg edge is used for a negative transition. Here are some examples. Clock is used for sequential circuits, so, positive or negative transition is used in that case. And in combined national circuits we use signal values. These are the default values for any pos edge events and neg edge events respectively. 0 to 1, x to 1, z to 1, 0 to x, and 0 to z are pos edge events. And, 1 to 0, x to 0, z to 0, 1 to x, and 1 to z are neg edge events by default. These are some examples showing event-based timing control. First example is executed only when there is positive transition of clock. In second example, execution is only triggered when there is any event on any one of them that is either A or B or C or D. Here is another example of edge triggered timing control statement. Here, if there is any change or event on reset, then Q will become zero. And, if there is any event on clock, Q will become equal to D. It is important to note that sensitivity lists can also be specified using the comma operator instead of the OR operator. Event control discussed earlier waited for the change of a signal value OR, the triggering of an event. The symbol of the rate provided edge sensitive control. Verilog also allows level sensitive timing control that is, the ability to wait for a certain condition to be true, before a statement or a block of statements is executed. The keyword wait is used for level sensitive constructs. This timing control statement is not synthesizable. Timing control statements are associated with behavioral modeling only. As we said that the timing control statements are associated with structured assignment statements only. It won't work if we do not write it in always or initial block. Block statements are used to group multiple statements, to act together as one. Statements or our desired logic will execute either sequentially or parallelly. So depending on this, there are two types of block statements, sequential blocks and parallel blocks. The keywords, begin, end, are used to group statements into sequential blocks. Sequential blocks have the following characteristics. The statements in a sequential block are processed in the order they are specified. A statement is executed only after its preceding statement completes execution, except for non-blocking assignments with intra-assignment timing control. If delay or event control is specified, it is relative to the simulation time, when the previous statement and the block completed execution. This is the syntax of sequential blocks, with always an initial respectively. In this example, x is 0 at simulation time 0, 
Why is one at simulation time 5 because delay of 5 time unit is provided. Similarly, Z is 0, 1, due to concatenation, at simulation time 15, and W is 1, 0 at simulation time 35. If there is no delay provided, all the statements will be executed at simulation time 0. Parallel blocks, specified by keywords fork and join, provide interesting simulation features. Some important points to be noted for these blocks, statements and a parallel block are executed concurrently. Ordering of statements is controlled by the delay or event control assigned to each statement. If delay or event control is specified, it is relative to the time the block was entered. Block finishes after the last statement completes. It is the statement with highest delay, it can be the first statement in the block. It is important to note that block statements are allowed to be nested. Notice the fundamental difference between sequential and parallel blocks. All statements in a parallel block start at the time when the block was entered. Thus, the order in which the statements are written in the block is not important. We will consider the same example of sequential block with delay and convert it to a parallel block by replacing begin and end keywords with fork and join. The result of simulation remains the same except that all statements start in parallel at time 0. Hence, the block finishes at time 20 instead of time 35. Parallel blocks provide a mechanism to execute statements in parallel. However, it is important to be careful with parallel blocks because of implicit race conditions that might arise if two statements that affect the same variable compete at the same time. Race conditions have been deliberately introduced in this example. All statements start at simulation time zero. The order in which the statements will execute is not known. Variables Z and W will get values 0, 1 and 1, 0 if X and Y execute first. Variables Z and W will get values to bit, X, if X and Y execute last. Thus, the result of Z and W is non-deterministic. In this example, initial block starts at 0, comes to begin keyword within 0 time unit, and also reaches first statement Y equals 0 at 0 time unit. Y is executed at 3 because a delay of 3 time unit is specified, and then reaches second statement M equals 1. As we know, begin end is sequential block and the statements within this block are executed according to the order they are specified, and each statement is executed only after its preceding statement completes execution. So, when first statement completes, its execution then only it reaches the second statement, which completes its execution at 8 time unit, because a delay of 5 time unit is specified, so 3 plus 5 is 8. Moving further it reaches fork at 8 time unit, and reaches all the statements within fork join block at 8 time unit only. We already know that statements, in the parallel block are executed concurrently. So, Q with 7 unit delay will be executed after 15 time unit. And, L will be executed after 8 plus 3, 11 units. It enters begin block at 8 time unit, and, A, is executed after 10 time unit. As begin is sequential block, B will be executed after 10 plus 3, 13 time unit. And at 13 time unit, it will reach end. Z will be executed after 8 plus 15, 23 time unit. And, parallel block of fork join will end at 23 units because it is the highest time taken within this block. Now again it will enter back to sequential block, so R will be executed after 23 plus 2 equals to 25. And, dollar stop will be executed after 25 plus 3 equals to 28. Are you, getting my point? See, you just have to take care in which block you are, sequential, or parallel, and then things are so easy. So, Simulation will end at 28 time unit. Here also, initial block starts at 0, comes to begin and first statement dry equals 5 within 0 time unit. And dry is executed, after a delay of 4 time unit. Fork is initiated at 4 time unit. Within fork and join block every statement, is initiated at 4 time unit. See you, 
will be executed after a delay of 6 and plus 4 that is 10 time unit. All the statements with this parallel block will be executed in parallel and will be initiated at 4 time unit. Now, we have entered the sequential block, so E will be executed at 4 time unit. J will be executed after a delay of 5 time unit plus 4 time unit, that is 9 time unit. It reaches end at 9 time unit. Returning back to the parallel block, dope will be executed after 4, plus delay of 2 time unit that is 6 time unit. Similarly, goes will be executed at 8 time unit and pass, will be executed at 12 time unit. So, the highest time taken within parallel block is 12, that is why join will be executed at 12 time unit. Now, again we are back to the sequential block, so statements will be executed sequentially. Backs will be executed at 12 plus delay of 8 that is 20 time unit. Similarly, zoom will be executed at 22 time unit and dollar stop at 28 time unit. And, simulation will end at 28 time unit. Coincidentally, both the examples have simulation time of 28 time unit. I hope with these examples, concept of sequential and parallel block statements must be clear. Come on, let's move into the flashback. In this tutorial we learned what behavioral modeling is. We studied structure procedure statements, initial and always. We learned about procedural assignment statements, port connection rule. We learned two types of timing control statements, which control timing and execution order of statements in Verilog. And last, we learned about sequential and parallel block statements. Some questions for you. I hope you'll be able to answer them.